Hi guys, I'm Alessandro Gandolosi and that's uh, a new video from the uh, Mastering Creates course by Produce with Fix School. Uh, this video is a bonus uh, tutorial uh, because you know some days ago we had a really nice thing released over the web and I talked about the CGI Moon Kit from NASA and uh, we are talking about a really nice uh, scan um, texture color and uh, uh, elevation map uh, really uh, really really useful for uh, computer graphics and 3d rendering we have the color map and here you see we have different kind of resolution and file format and we have the displacement so also for the displacement we have the 64, 16 and 4 um, bit per 4 pixels so uh, we are talking really uh, about really really nice thing that can be used to create something interesting and uh, realistic so my main idea is to see how we can use the, the data we just downloaded we are talking about really big and large scale texture uh, to create a realistic moon. Creating a realistic moon is not so complex if we are distant from the moon. So uh, I got to remove the light, I got to remove this camera and we got to pick this context here and then we got to create the first context let's say moon model then we have a new one and this one is the materials and then a new one for textures okay um, the main idea is to uh, also to use the really nice feature in uh, uh, Clarice to create a real world scaling uh, real world scaling models and environments so I made some searches and research about uh, moon and stuff like that so I found some information for example over Wikipedia and you see that here we have the radius and we have the scaling and you see that we have um, an equatorial radius and a polar radius so we're going to use the same measure and we're going to use the right scaling to achieve the better result possible um, I made this scene uh, with some tests, so uh, I found some information about lighting and position that can be useful and we are going to reuse it. So first thing is to create the moon. The moon is really simple, uh, will be obviously a geometry a sphere. Okay, let's rename this one as moon. So the first thing we have to do is to, let's go to close some panel and we go to let's close more stuff here because we don't need it okay and uh, uh, the first thing is to use the same radius so uh, the first idea is that we have the equatorial radius and the polar radius so we can use one radius and then scale over the other axis the, the moon so we go to have the equatorial radius so we are talking about one seven um, three eight dot one kilometers okay we have the right scaling for our scene let's go far and far and far so you know this is we are inside the moon okay let's say that this one is our new camera we can move the camera here and uh, in the path tracer we have the background and we have to say that the background is using uh, the active camera and it's using this one so if we go here you see that we have something inside the rendering obviously uh, actually it's nothing because we have no texture and nothing else so that's why we have to to play with uh, I like later to make some changes to the um, to the path tracer too by the way uh, let's start preparing the texture so we go to load the first texture and we go for texture map map file uh, this is the moon color 
and uh, we go let's close some panel here and we go to load the texture and inside our folder here and then over moon we have the displacement and the color this is the color so you see it's half gigabytes let's set here a texture view so we can see how it looks it takes a little bit to be loaded and optimized so uh, you know we are talking about really big and large scale uh, large scale texture but uh, we have to wait just the first time then everything will go really smooth without problems and without slowdown so let's wait to have it we can stop the recording maybe if uh, it is going to be too much slow okay it is done that's the texture and it's really big if you like to see this one and dock let's scale it and we can go near and you see that we have steer the tape so uh, it's really really big okay um, let's close uh, maybe we can put again inside here okay uh, so we need a material let's create a new material let's go for a standard oh sorry that's not right so new material standard okay and it is moon shader drag and drop over it and we need some lights so the first thing we can do is to put a decent light so let's create a new light physical distant this is useful to simulate the sun and to be precise I, I made some research and the sun is around 150 million pol um, kilometers distant from the uh, the moon obviously I'm not taking care about orbit and other other stuff so it's not completely realistic but it is enough to to play with so let's go to move maybe over the x-axis so 150 and 3 and 3 kilometers okay now it is on the right position by the way I found some nice uh, position uh, we are going to use it in a few let's go to have an higher uh, quality for the sampling nothing special just something to, to talk about so we, we can take care about higher quality uh, let's go back in the material and the moon uh, let's say uh, we are going to use the glossy reflection so let's say that here we have a 4 for the multiplier to have an higher sampling uh, let's close some panels because we don't need so much stuff and we can go to pick the texture uh, I'm not taking care about the material editor because you know uh, we are talking about really simple uh, stuff so uh, we can play with um, the exposure so let's go higher maybe it's too much so let's go maybe to 2.0 uh, not so nice is that we have this kind of reflection over the material so we have to pick the material but before we can add a layer here so let's go for a new color layer and this one can be called back color okay we have to move it down and then we get to choose the color and in general we get to pick the black okay so again over the moon shader and we need to change the reflection uh, because you know it's really really too much so it, it needs some tweaks um, so I think we can have lower specularity uh, let's go maybe at 50 and then let's go to roughness let's have a really high roughness let's go to 60 and it's not bad if needed we can go lower with the specularity so maybe let's do something in the middle so 35 
so uh, mainly you see at distance uh, it is working perfectly because the, the quality of the texture is amazing so uh, it works we we should see uh, nothing wrong with this one but I like to go near the moon and find, find some details so I found some nice position for camera and moon so I'm going to use the same value I used in my scene so we go to um, scale first of all the moon over the y-axis because we have two different radius if you do the proportion between I mean uh, it's not this one it's this one so uh, if you go here you see that we have one radius here and one radius here so we can make the proportion and the proportion is that we have to scale over the y-axis to 0 0.9988 Okay, now it is perfect. Um, so the next thing is to use uh, some kind of different rotation because we are going to set the position in a really nice way. Okay, so you see it's a little bit rotated over the x-axis and the y-axis. Then we have the camera. So let's move the camera to have the same position I used in my demo scene. And we have to move it just a little bit. So 377. 8925 and then we go to change over the white one nine um, or maybe we can tweak it later by the way let's use it so six nine zero five and then one eight three three dot five zero zero one okay so uh, I think we are over the ground and that's why we see nothing because we are over maybe the the black shadows by the way let's go to rotate the camera to be sure that we are checking the right position so minus 46 0, 0, 3, 3, and then over the y-axis 11.6456 okay uh, if we go here and we say uh, right mouse button look through uh, camera so it seems that we are over the moon so we have to move the Sun because in my scene I used at the end a different Sun position so the first thing I done is to change the rotation to 11 and to 775 Now, let's go to go out a little bit. Uh, let's do it here because I'm not sure we are. I think I wrote something wrong about the camera. So uh, here we are talking about 377.8925 kilometers. And here we are talking about 19.38.6905. Uh, kilometers. Uh, it was wrong because we were using uh, meters. So 1833.5001 kilometers. Uh, this one is not right. Dot 5001 kilometers. Okay. So we are over the ground. Okay, you see that it is working nicely. So the, the main problem is that you see we are near and now the problem is that we have no elevation. And it's just a sphere with a texture. So that's the main problem. To save the project, so save as and save over the scene. So uh, it is simple to understand that we need some kind of, uh, you know, um, of texture map to create a displacement. So, inside the model, let's go to create a displace. Okay. Uh, then we go to select this one and we go to pick the displacement. Uh, don't, don't, uh, don't be um, sad about this, uh, this result. It is based just on the model so we have to go here and you see that if we have the displacement let's go to tessellation only and let's say that we have 10 tessellation okay we have 
again back the sphere. Uh, the displacement actually is uh, taking care about uh, the elevation. Um, I, uh, I made some research uh, to find the elevation and I found that the higher mountain over the moon is around five um, and I found that the higher uh, the highest uh, mountain over the, the moon is around um, five five kilometers and half. So uh, let's say that we need maybe a uh, maximum eight kilometers for the bound and that the mountain the higher mountain is uh, five kilometers in half. But you know, uh, I'm not sure that the result is the best one. I try to use lower value and I think it's uh, it is better. Let's get to create a new texture. Control C, Control V. And this one will be the moon elevation. The moon elevation is the uh, the displays. So so let's go to pick the right texture and it is the let's go to use the 64 this one with an higher level of detail and uh, this map uh, we are going to use it uh, just tweaking some information to make it readable and to do it we have just to say to use the raw data and then we say to use just the uh, luminance channel to pick the information so let's go here and say force luminance. So uh, now we can use it and the idea is to pick the moon and then we go to select this one and uh, we say uh, let's pick the texture. We can go here or maybe if you like you can set the material editor. Okay, uh, we can close this panel and then in the texture we can pick the elevation let's close and connect to the front value so now it is taking care about the displacement by the way you see that we have no details let's try to understand why we have no uh, no information here uh, let's create a new camera and this is let's call it maybe perspective okay uh, let's say that we go here to see with this one and let's go to pick this one okay so we have no right subdivision to create uh, the right information so we have to do something about it uh, let's pick the moon and we can go to have here uh, we have the subdivision. Let's go for example for 100. You see that here we have something. Uh, so something is happening. If we go back here, you see that we start to see some information. Uh, obviously the problem is that the information are really, really low. So let's go to 1000. It takes just a little bit to do the stuff we need. We can add, for example, the progress view here. So we can take care about what's happening Okay, it is starting to simulate something that is more useful than the previous, uh, the previous render we had. I like to uh, double check something about the camera because I try to simulate something really similar to the lunar orbiter. So let's go for 6.0, oh sorry, centimeters obviously, because we are talking about millimeters. And here we go for 8. Dot zero centimeters and then we go here and we can maintain this value as not a problem maybe we can rise up a little bit just to have a better scaling about the scene okay so um i like to simulate a little bit of atmosphere because you know the atmosphere over the um the moon is really really poor but we have something. Uh, maybe we can create some complex setup using the volume, but I like to make something really simple. So the most simple thing is to add an environment light. So let's go for light, physical environment. 
It is not physically right, but it can be useful to give us the right uh, effects we like to, to, to obtain. Let's go to have an higher sample count to have a right GI. Uh, you see that we need to lower with this one. Uh, I made some uh, tests about it uh, and something around, for example, minus four, or if you like to have something a little bit more visible, you can go, for example, to three, eight, and, sub and stuff like that. So you see, we see something around, but it is not so precise. Um, let's talk about the displacement. Uh, as you see, it is working nicely, but as I say to you, I think it is really high. So it is physically right, actually, because you know we have the right measure, but we have no information about the elevation and how this map is done. So actually, I'm going to um, to lower a little bit, maybe something around alt. So 2.5 kilometer pounds, oh, sorry, 2.5 kilometers. So it is a little bit lower, but the result is a little bit nicer. And uh, then we we can rise up still the resolution about the mesh. Uh, you know, in this way, we are going to have a really nice looking moon. But I like to have not so much uh, polygons. So I think uh, maybe here we can go lower, so maybe 30% of final uh, sampling. If we go over the moon and we say, for example, 2000, we'll have a nice resolution for the moon shading and the moon displacement, and uh, the, the mesh will be not so high poly and not so heavy to manage and to be rendered. So mesh is ready, you see that it's uh, creating the rendering and uh, we have to do something about the shadows. So um, we can go here to say to render just a region and uh, let's go to have a bigger rendering. So let's say that the final resolution is full HD and you see that now it's more visible. And let's scale to just this area. I mean, the um, the shadows are really sharp. I like to make something a little bit less uh, sharp, so uh, some some kind of soft shadows. And it's not completely realistic, but you know, again, there is a really thin layer of atmosphere over the moon, so we can do something like that because we have scattering inside the. Um, the uh, atmosphere about the sun. So to achieve the um, um, the soft shadows, we have just to select the sun, and then we go to rest up the angle. Uh, let's go for ten. It is really you see really soft. So we can go lower, maybe to five. It is still really smooth. So let's go maybe a little bit lower, two, three. So it will be not so much, but uh, we should have a really nice kind of result. Let's wait for some layer, uh, some bucket. So uh, we have still, uh, we still need some more details over the surface because you see it's not so much about the displays. Maybe I'd like to find a better way to achieve the result so we can make some changes. First of all, um, if we go here, uh, we get to, sorry, first of all, let's go back to maybe alt resolution. We can remove this point of view and uh, in the image, let's call this one. Let's call it 3D layer, okay. And uh, we have just to double check the naming. Okay, um, so if we go here and we say to use the other camera, uh, I'm sure that it's working perfectly because you know, uh, when we have some kind of distance, obviously the displacement is not so high in quality, but we don't need a so high quality. So uh, it should work perfectly. 
If you like to see a little bit more stuff here on the dark side, you can use obviously the environment light. It's not a problem. You can raise up this, uh, the exposure in this one. So you see it is working nicely. Uh, we don't need more information about the displacement. But again, if we are really near the surface to make something different, uh, we need more information. So the first thing we can do, uh, let's go to pick just one area, for example. Okay. The first thing we can do is to uh, go again over the moon and say that we like to have more subdivision. Let's go for 3000 and off. And in this way, we are going to have more quality. Uh, it takes maybe just a little bit to prepare, you see, the mesh. Uh, at the same time, we can go in the path tracer and uh, we go higher with the sampling um, here. Let's go to 256. Uh, this is the global illumination. And about the anti-alias, I like to change the filter. Let's go for a Gaussian. And we can use the three pixel. Uh, it's not a big pain. Uh, it will work nicely. So uh, it is taking care about the new model. Uh, you know, it takes a little bit to prepare. And then we can see um, if uh, it is enough. Uh, I'm sure that it's, uh, it is going to be better than before. Uh, this is for sure. But you know, uh, we have to, to decide if uh, it is enough or if you have to do something else. Obviously, you know, this map is really high in quality. I mean, the elevation, the color, but uh, obviously we, we can maintain some kind of distance between the, the moon ground layer because, uh, you know, we, we have no, not so uh, much information to create the moon. So uh, we have to create something different if we like to stay over the moon or maybe to fly to the moon and uh, and then to to stay over the ground by the way uh it is perfect to to stay a little bit far from the moon surface because you see the the quality is really high so you see it is still preparing some stuff remember that we are working on an older uh workstation so we are talking about a dual xian uh key five 2687W, but we are talking about the model zero, so it is not so fast. So let's wait to see the preview. Okay, it is starting to prepare. Uh, we have for sure more details than before, and that's really nice. Let's wait to have the right sampling. And, uh, you know, it is not bad, but I see that we are losing the tails over the surface. So, we have to do something to rise up the quality, and uh, we don't need to create more spans and more subdivision over the ground. And to, to do something like that, in this, uh, in this case, we can do something really nice. We can go back to the moon, and uh, here in the displacement, you see that we changed the set to tessellation only. We can change again and go to tessellation with bump. In this way, it is going to use the displacement map to create the displacement, so the elevation. And in the same way, it is going to add a bump layer to the displacement. So uh, the, the final result will be really more detailed than before. And uh, you will see the result in a few. And I'm sure you will love it because uh, it is really, really nice. So let's wait just a little bit to to find uh, how it is looking. Okay, it is done. You see that is uh, it is going to uh, add more details than before. Let's wait for some bucket and you can see the differences. We have more and more details and uh, it is working really nice because we have the displays but we have also the bumping so we have 
a lot of more details. Uh, let's go, for example, to an higher sampling, let's say 64, so we can see some layers, uh, some bucket. To understand the level of quality we are uh, reaching with uh, this change, And, uh, you know, uh, it is really simple. Uh, it is a simple project, it is a simple setup. If you like to play a little bit with the material, with the shader, I mean, uh, you can make some changes because I uh, just use just the color. Uh, so you can make something more complex. You can go to head, for example, the, uh, the glossiness and the reflection controlled by uh, the color, maybe you can use some map notes, uh, sorry, math notes to change how it looks, how it works, and uh, we, should, we should achieve a really nice level of detail. Uh, on the other side, talking about the shadows, I think that is working nicely. It seems not bad. I mean, maybe we can go a little bit higher with the environment. So let's say maybe minus three six. So we have a little bit more light here, and here we can go two point five to have a little bit of sharper shadows. Okay. Uh, let's see maybe at the right, uh, just a scaled version to see how it is looking. Let's see. And we can see also from the other camera, and uh, uh, it is really essentially, it is a really simple uh, project, you know, nothing so complex. But it is uh, nice to see, and this uh, essentially really realistic. So you see that it's going really, really nice. I really love how this plane here. We have some kind of nice level of details around something done by the displacement, something it is done by the lighting and the uh, bump effects. So, you know, it is really amazing. Uh, the other idea is to see how it looks from the other uh, map, obviously. So, let's. Uh, Let's go in the material editor and I like to make a really fast preview. So 3D layer and let's go. Here and we say to use the camera perspective and let's say to use a lower value here. I think it's, it's not so much the stuff we need from this point of view. So you see it is going to render and uh, it takes just a little bit at the beginning to prepare the global illumination and then it is here and it works. From this point of view, for example, I think that we can go to remove the bump without problem. So you can stay with the tessellation only, it's not a big pain because the quality is enough and the distance is really high. Okay? So, uh, it is obviously again preparing the displacement because uh, it works just with, uh, uh, without the uh, band, but that's just the tessellation. So, then we'll have again the preview and it will be enough for the moment. So, you know, in this way, it is using just the first one. And, you know, at this distance, we can add some kind of difference. So that's why I am talking about this feature. Okay, let's go back to this one. Uh, we can go back to the moon and uh, we can use the tessellation and the band. Okay, so um, that's all for this, uh, this lesson. Uh, it was a really simple thing to, to show how to use the CGI Moon Kit with uh, Chloris. And uh, I can say just thanks for watching and we'll see you soon for the next 
uh, Curry's uh, lesson. So, uh, bye bye and thanks again.